So what's going on guys, Kade is here and welcome back to a brand new video. For today I will show you the top 3 best meta war builds in New World. So for each and every single tank, healer and DPS build I will explain what attributes, weapon masteries and even weapon and gear perks you want to have. Then what gems and specific gear you want to use to get out your stats, as much damage, healing or defensives as possible. Then as well I will show you the best meta gameplay of me using different weapons so you would know which abilities you want to use first on your enemies or your teammates and much more. So if all this sounds interesting to you then let's get right into it. So then moving over to the first build which I like to call it as the ultimate sniper class. And for the weapons we go with the bow and musket and these are the attributes you want to have. So basically this build is built around doing a lot of damage from very far distance and you will not have almost any defensives whatsoever but the damage that you will do will blow your mind. So first of all no matter from which level you start using this build you want to get your dexterity to 200 and then start putting points in constitution and around level 60 you should have 400 dexterity and 50 constitution and lastly for your gear you want to go with the light category which means using the best setup aka one medium chest piece and then all the other light equipment so then taking a closer look at the first weapon which is the musket and these are the weapon masteries you want to have so first things first you want to get this one perk and then unlock the first ability called the powder burn and then get these two perks then afterwards get the second ability called the shooter stance and then get these two perks as well and now from here let's move over to the other side and unlock these two perks and then last Lastly, let's get the third ability called the sticky bomb and then get these two perks and that's it. Now from this moment you can spend your points in whatever way you want. So then for the second weapon we have the bow and these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first of all you want to unlock this one perk and then the first ability called the rain of arrows and then get these three perks. Then from here let's unlock the second ability called the poison shot and then get these two perks as well. And now let's take a closer look at the other side and unlock the last third ability called the penetrating shot and then get these two perks and that's it. Now again you can unlock all the other perks in whatever order you like. Okay so now let's go over to the gameplay where I'll show you the best way to play this build and how to get out your abilities the highest damage possible. So for the first weapon we have the musket and the first Q spell is called the powder burn which overloads our musket with gunpowder dealing increased damage and on the hit the enemy will get a burning effect which will be doing damage over time. Then the second ability is called the shooter stance which when you activate makes your character enter the crouching position which deals damage and gives you the option to shoot 5 bullets and at the same time all of the reloading time is reduced by 75%. And then lastly the third ability is called the sticky bomb which throws a short range bomb that sticks to the target and after 3 seconds it will explode which will deal a bunch of damage in 3 meter range. So then taking a closer look at the second weapon which is the bow and the first Q spell is called the poison shot which gives you the ability to shoot an arrow and when it reaches a target the arrow will explode and create a green poison smoke and enemies standing in that smoke will be taking damage every second. Then the second ability is called the rain of arrows which shoots the circle with bunch of arrows in 3 meter range and if a target gets hit he will take damage and bleed for 12 seconds which will do on top of all this even more damage and then lastly our third ability is called the penetrating shot which shoots this one powerful arrow that deals 150% more weapon damage and the arrow itself can go through multiple players which makes the spell very useful in 50v50 wars. So then moving over to the combat and in my experience I focus mainly on spamming the light attacks in general pvp and then mainly for wars you want to keep on rotating between both weapon abilities. My main goal with this build is to try to alternate between auto attacks and abilities. So first of all I use the bow and I normally use one auto attack and then shoot poison shot and then follow that up with one normal attack and then the penetrating shot. And then lastly the rain of arrows. And then now I switch to the musket and I use one auto attack and then the powder burn and then the sticky bomb. And if I ever see a player running away or with low health then I quickly activate the shooter stance and burst him down. As this build is very high damage you need to be very careful about positioning. So if you are a defender then most likely you shoot the enemies from walls. Or if you are the attacker then try to find rivers or rocks where you can see the whole fight but it's hard for the enemy to attack you. So just like I said use the all weapon abilities and then just use the light attacks till you get your cooldowns back up. 
and then repeat the same process. And of course, don't forget to use all of your AoE abilities on grouped up enemies, which usually is on points and then for your light attacks, try to find low HP players or just players by themselves and that's about it. So now for my last and final conclusions for this build. This bow and musket weapon combination is the highest damage build in the game, and with the abilities and perks we have selected, we mainly focus on very high AoE damage. So then for our gem choice, there are two options for the bow and musket, either way you want to decide to go with the diamond gem, if you most of the time in war stay in your team's backline, and don't take that much damage. Or then on the other hand, if you take damage and you don't mind constantly using the light dodge rolls, then use the opal gems. This of course depends on your playstyle, but I personally don't like to dodge rolling every second or two, so I go with the diamond gem for both weapons. And I can put all of my attention to hitting my shots and then lastly for all of your gear, amulets, rings and everything else, use the enix gems. And then on top of all this, to find out the best weapon and gear perks, watch this video, which is titled, which weapon and gear perks are the best for your build. You can find the link in this video's description or just scroll through my channel. And in that specific guide I will explain how perks work and which ones are the best for your gear, weapons and much more. And then like per usual, if you can afford it, then don't forget about using plus 40 constitution food and honing stones for 7% increased damage. So if you're looking for the highest damage build and you want to be on top 1 leaderboards in wars, then this is the best build for you, so enjoy! So then, going over to the second build, which is the Great Axe and Warhammer. And these are the attributes you want to have. So then, no matter from which level you start using this build, you first of all want to get your strength to 100, or even 150, and then start building your constitution. And around level 60, you should have 250 strength and 200 constitution. And then last but not the least, for your armor, you can this time make a choice to go with the medium or full heavy category. I have seen a bunch of players going with the medium, and have Having the ability to have 3 medium jumps while being melee is pretty good, or on the other hand, being a bit more tankier is better for some other players. So I would recommend to try out both these setups and see which one you like better. But like I've said, both these options are good, it just depends on what is your playstyle. But I personally prefer the full heavy armor. So then if you choose to go with the heavy category, then you want to go with full heavy armor and for your character to look better, you can even equip a shield as well. Or then if you choose to go with the medium category, then for your setup you should be having heavy helmet, heavy chest armor, medium gloves, light pants and medium boots. So then for our first weapon we have the great axe and these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first of all you want to unlock the first ability called the maelstrom and then get these three perks. Then afterwards unlock the second ability called the gravity well and then get these three perks. Then from this point now let's move over to the other side and unlock this one perk. And then lastly unlock the last third ability called the charge and then get these four perks. And now from this point you are free to pick and choose which perks you want to unlock next. Okay, and now let's move over to the second weapon, which is the Warhammer. And these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first of all, you want to unlock the first ability called the Clear Route. And then get these three perks. Then afterwards, unlock the second and third ability called the Shockwave and Path of Destiny. And then get these four perks. And now from this point, let's move over to the other side and unlock these three perks. And that's it. Now again, you can unlock all the other perks in whatever order you like. So then let's move over to the gameplay where I'll show you the best way to play this build. So first things first, for your Great Axe Q ability we have the Gravity Well, which you can just aim and shoot. And if you hit a target in that electric storm, he will take damage and get stunned. Then the second ability is called the Maelstrom, which performs a fast spinning attack, which deals damage and pulls targets closer to you. And then lastly we have the F ability called the Charge. And this is a dash ability, which deals damage and gives you more mobility. And now let's go straight into the Warhammer. And the first Q spell is called the Clear Out, which is a wide swing that knocks back all targets in 4 meter range. Then the second ability is called the Shockwave. And when using the spell, it will give us the ability to slam down the hammer and create a small earthquake. And all players standing in it will get stunned for 2 seconds. And then lastly, our third ability is called the Path of Destiny, which creates a huge electric wave. And all enemies standing in this path will be taking a bunch of damage in AOB range. So then in the combat, the way you want to attack an enemy is by first of all using the Great Axe and then activating the Gravity Well, which will stun your target and then follow that up with the Maelstrom ability, 
which will do damage and pull targets closer to you. Then at this point, switch to the Warhammer and use the Shockwave and then Path of Destiny. And then lastly, if ever your teammates are in trouble or you want to push out your enemies from the capture point, then use the clear out ability and then from this point, switch back to the Great Axe and keep on using heavy attacks and then I always save my charge ability to run away from the enemy or to catch him. So save it for later. And don't forget to use your medium or heavy jumps to escape the enemy abilities and that's about it. Like you can see with this build there is no one best way to use your spells. The most important thing is to know what each ability does and with time of practice you will know what to do in each circumstance. So now for my last and final conclusions for this build. This great axe and warhammer weapon combination is very good because you can survive very long but at the same time deal a bunch of AV damage in wars. So then last but not the least for the warhammer and great axe you want to use the all gem and then for all of your gear, rings, amulets and everything else use the enix gems. And then again, like I explained in the first build, to find out the best weapon and gear perks watch this video, which link I will put in this video's description or just scroll through my channel. And in that specific guide I will explain how perks work and which ones are the best for your gear and weapons and so much more. And on top of all this, don't forget to use the tier 5 gemstone dust for increased absorption of elemental damage. And then to get even more attribute points, use the plus 40 constitution food. So if you were looking for a very powerful tank slash melee bruiser build, that is used by the best players and is very good for all activities pvp or pve related, then this is the best weapon combination for you, so have fun! So then moving over to my last and final build which is by far the best healer build in the entire game. And for the weapons we want to use the void gauntlet and live staff. And then these are the attributes you want to have. So first things first, if you start from level 0 you want to get your focus to 150. And then start building your constitution. And around level 60 you should have 300 focus and 150 constitution. And lastly for your gear you want to go with the medium category. And the best gear setup is to have heavy helmet, heavy chest armor, medium gloves, light pants and medium boots. And this will give you 22.9 kg weight which is exactly just below the heavy weight category. So then moving over to the first weapon which is the void gauntlet and these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first of all you want to unlock both these two perks and then get the first ability called the oblivion and then get these two perks. Then afterwards unlock the second ability called the petrifying scream and then get these two perks as well. And now let's move over to the other side and unlock the last third ability called the orb of decay and then get these three perks and that's it. Now from this moment you can unlock all the other perks in whatever order you like. So then let's go over to the second weapon which is the life staff and these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first of all you want to unlock this perk and then the first ability called the sacred ground and then afterwards unlock all these three perks. Then now let's go over to the other side and unlock this one perk and then the second ability called the beacon and then get these two perks. Then lastly unlock the last third ability called the lights embrace and then get these two perks as well. And now from this point you're free to spin your points in whatever order you want. Okay so now let's go over to the gameplay where I'll show you the best way to play this build. So first of all for the void gauntlet we have the first Q ability called the oblivion which creates a circle around you and you and your teammates inside the circle will be getting 20% damage increase. But on the other hand your enemy standing in the circle will be taking void damage every second. And a really nice thing to do is while standing in the circle do a bunch of medium jumps. And because of the perks we have selected we and any other allies in the circle will be getting plus 15 stamina each jump. So this will give us the ability to dodge more enemy attacks and gain more stamina at the same time. I found this feature very useful in wars to escape enemy attacks. So then for the second ability we have a petrifying scream which when using will unleash a void scream and this will stagger and root enemies in front of you. And then lastly we have the third ability which is called the orb of decay and you can fire this orb which can go to your enemies and each enemy that it hits it will deal decent damage and reduce their damage absorption and then later that orb will come back and heal you or your nearby teammates. And lastly if you hold the right mouse button you can regain more mana but in exchange your health will go down. This is the only build that I would recommend to use this mechanic. So if you're standing in your own healing circle and you really need more mana and your mana potions are on cooldown then hold the right mouse button for a second or two and you should be good to go. 
So then for the second weapon we have the life staff and your Q ability is called the sacred ground, which you have to point and select the area you wanna place it in, and then cast it for a split second. Then the R ability is called the lights embrace, and it basically works the same way, just for a single target. And you can heal yourself by holding the control button and then activating the spell. And then lastly we have the F ability called beacon, which you can just aim and it places a huge circle on the ground. And if you target a player you can attach the spell to him specifically, so instead of the circle being on the ground it will be attached to a player, which makes the spell very useful in group PvP. So this build's main objective is to heal your teammates but at the same time support them with extra damage increase. So the way you want to use this build is first of all use your life staff and use all the 3 healing spells. I prefer to use the beacon and then the lights embrace ability and this way my healing is increased and with the low lights embrace cooldown I can basically spam it every 2-3 seconds and then on group top allies I use the sacred ground ability and then when your teammates call out to give them extra damage switch to the void gauntlet and use the oblivion spell and give them extra damage and then when usually my life staff abilities are on cooldown I use the petrifying scream first and then the orb of decay and this roots enemies in front of you and I get to heal myself and nearby teammates and then while your abilities are on cooldown keep on using auto attacks with the life staff as it will have the highest damage with normal attacks and that's about it. So then for my last and final conclusions for this build. This void gauntlet and life staff weapon combination is very strong and is definitely the meta build for healers. And then lastly for the life staff and void gauntlet you want to use the diamond gem and then for all of your gear, rings, amulets and everything else use the enix gems. And then again like I already explained to find out the best weapon and gear perks watch this video which is titled which weapon and gear perks are the best for your build. You can find this video's link in description or just scroll through my channel. And on top of all this, don't forget to use tier 5 gemstone dust for increased absorption of elemental damage. And to get even more attribute point, use the plus 40 constitution food. So in a quick summary, if you're looking for the best healer PvP and PvE build, and if you want to deal damage but at the same time support the rest of your teammates, then this is the best build for you. So I hope you enjoy. And that's about it. So I really do appreciate everyone for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions, feedback or other good new world war builds that you would like to see in the next video, then feel free to leave your comments in the comment section down below. And while you're doing that, please click like, subscribe and enable that notification bell. So this way you could support the channel and you won't miss any more amazing content from me. With all this said, you have an amazing day and I'll catch you in my next video. So take it easy. Peace.